generic question design a smart thermostat how to approach a design problem is there a general pattern that needs to be followed uh, requirements gathering hardware software design state machine yeah of course those are all the things so basically um, what is that purpose of this kind of open uh, one you know, one line design questions right so the it's an opportunity provided by the interviewer to um, demonstrate certain uh, design skills right uh, not only technical skills, so the skills it could be you know design skills it could be requirements gathering skills it could be other soft skills basically communication skills so it's an opportunity irrespective of what the problem statement is and then it also means certain degree of awareness of product product awareness right so that is what the the designer is uh, i mean the interviewer is looking for in such questions is not an asking you to implement it anyway so it's about how you think so so the problem statement something like smart thermostat right now i am sure if not you have not designed it before at least you would have used one so as a user what can you say um, about requirements especially the functionality non functional requirements may not be possible um, but do you know what this is supposed to do a thermostat the main functionality the main functionality is to control temperature and then there may be other smart functionality so smart functionality may how adaptive it is or it can it learn usage patterns etc so as a user you should be able to uh, place those i mean you know instead of freezing there you think of as a user if you have seen one or if you have read about one or if you have used one you would be able to describe this then you can elaborate on this uh, requirement then there could be also business objectives are you able to think beyond technical or are you able to think business objectives for example a thermostat can be just a, a device that is sold on its own uh, or it could be a service as a service right for example your utility bills can be enabled uh, so you basically the value proposition is you reduce the energy bills by using this device so the, the smart thermostat's job is not just to uh, do what it is told but it the, the business objective is to produce lower energy bills and therefore a percentage of that is the revenue for the device vendor so are you able to see beyond the 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 hard, uh, hardware piece or the product are you able to see what business it enables that's a good uh, desirable uh, attribute to think of of course when you think in so many dimensions you may lose uh, track of uh, essential so you should always think about what is the minimum viable product don't you know are you having a tendency to complicate um, so this is what the interviewer will be uh, looking for are you able to simplify are you actually dealing with uh, ambiguity so these are the things that will be you will be signaling through your responses right so you should be aware of uh, this kind of angles that uh, that you would be expected to approach now we talked about smart so then you can derive some is it a connected product or a stand alone okay so how does it interface to a gateway or a cloud service cloud database or whatever so you can now this is where your background helps right now in the interview you might have experience working only on a, a embedded device you have no idea about the cloud so you it's an opportunity for you to direct uh, you know to the to your strengths so 
don't get into areas which you are not uh, strong in right um, it may actually you know you may be ending up in trouble so you like in any interview you bring the the conversation to your strength so if you are familiar with a gateway product um, you can talk more about the communication angles to that and if you have done some cloud uh, database or provisioning or those kind of things you can talk about so while the connected product a smart product may have all of these where do you emphasize it's up to your strength of course you cannot completely be ignorant of the other parts but you speak more on what your strength area is right and of course uh, you know the design skills will come uh, after all this so basically where do you come from are you a hardware engineer or a software or firmware engineer or a database designer etc so you would basically elaborate based on that and uh, you also mentioned hardware software partitioning now when you talk about this okay uh, or for that matter any design are you able to give rationale for this why you want partition in this way first of all you thinking about partition and rationale for example performance uh, battery life or uh, cost etc you know, what do you do in hardware what you so justifications or rationale you should have to articulate then uh, of course you would talk about uh, non functional requirements modularity uh, for modularity and other things so maintainability configurability deployability and things like that are you able to talk about non functional requirements and therefore a choice of a platform so uh, this is important but this is not primary but it is basically you know are you aware of any platform okay so you say i have used this platform it, it's good because it it provides a hardware accelerator for certain computation whatever so basically you are bringing your past experience in making these choices and in the process you are communicating your knowledge and awareness of what you have already worked with so it is it, it this new new problem statement is just a context to uh, elaborate on what you already know provided you can link it up for relevance then comes how do you communicate right so you talked about requirements so asking or confirming it's better to say okay this is what i think this is the assumptions i am making so this brings your clarity of what bounds you are putting on the problem statement are you able to communicate that and then of course you know design wise you block diagrams or any other diagrams context diagrams text stack are you able to communicate what is the text stack you are using and how they are providing different services and most importantly design alternatives if you can think of you know and then the rational for choosing one choice so basically you are giving a given an opportunity to a uh, free you know free opportunity to exhibit all these skills your uh, awareness of a product some business angle some deployment angle that is uh, and then in in basically nailing the requirements and then in simplifying the problem because you are now doing a toy problem to what is essential functionality and what is essential non functional requirements are and then are you thinking of uh, leveraging your past experience and uh, are you bringing to some value to the table because of your past experience with a platform or a tool or something like that and then communication with uh, block diagrams text like these are the tools that engineers communicate so are you familiar with those things so you may you may be asked to draw a state machine so maybe not asked but you know if you do these these things then you are talking an engineering language so that is basically what the approach i would think of for such questions yeah bushan uh, you have any more 
comments to make on that? Hey, Rabu, I have a question. Yeah. So, in this, uh, so if, in the specific, uh, you know, design, right? So, uh, the specific, you know, smart thermostat. So, I have seen like few blogs where they use like, um, like arm-based microcontrollers. But to be more specific, like in your experience and uh, dealing with the product, like. um which type of tech stack or microcontrollers have you seen more commonly used or how typically yeah definitely any connected product if you are talking about smart um <clears throat> you can think of it in three ways basically the core functionality of uh, sensing and uh, you know any control interface it should the, the microcontroller platform should support that right the sensing of a thermostat uh, is important and any control uh, interface for controlling the hvac system so those basic peripheral interfaces the platform should support then comes the software stack in terms of connectivity um, so are you talking about wifi or are you talking about uh, bluetooth or any other connectivity uh, so the platform should support as well as the software platform should provide you the the basic uh, connection stack connectivity stack then uh, yeah of course the it's battery powered or uh, it is powered line powered uh, is important in the choice once you have those basics out of the way then then comes the tech stack mostly to do with uh, device management uh, software updates uh, how do you do uh, does the platform provide those things Um, you know, because basically, once you deploy again, these are consumer products. Uh, so you you can think of a thermostat. Traditionally, were installed by industrial automation guys, basically the HVAC guys. So the professional installation is done. Now, these smart things may also be done by professional um, installers, especially if the business model is uh, based on energy saving. But it could also be. Uh, consumer in self installed a device so the configuration how does it actually uh, start you know you just plug it in power it on and then you expect it to work there are a lot of behind the scene uh, things that go on in in basically device onboarding uh, valid uh, authenticating the device and uh, you may be asked to do a you know pairing of some sort uh, identity management device identity management and all that so you have to know whether your platform can support those things like software update so that is there sufficient uh, flash memory to have uh, two or more images of the firmware to do a, a over the air update so you can actually uh, do so again you know those those are the choices that you would make from a, a deployment perspective um So, uh, does it answer your question? Yeah, uh, I. So, one other portion of it was, is there like a general guideline as, I, I mean, there we can't exactly have like one specific of MC or this thing, but um, are there like a class or family of uh, microcontrollers? that could fit into these different types of applications and how can we like probably identify them because for some applications we might know some applications we might not know if one might fit in or not so is there like any <laughs> yeah it will depend it will depend on obviously the the kind of product that you are talking about right so if you are talking about a consumer or industrial product now if it's a vr headset then you need high performance platforms um, like the one from qualcomm uh, so basically you know to to know that you if you know this question is coming because you are attending an interview with a certain group you can do some research and find out what they already use if if it is available uh, otherwise it's very you know generic platforms are good enough to start with and you can state so i am not familiar with uh, Uh, the best platform for this kind of product, but assume I have worked with such and such uh, 
low power product or a such and such low cost product or such and such uh, high performance product and extrapolate so if you work with the uh, ti product um, uh, which basically you know does what the qualcomm product does maybe more or less it's fine you can you can bring that down uh, so it's it's not necessary because if you know go and do the uh, preparation uh, then obviously you will know much more if not if you are suddenly blindfolded and ask this question you have to leverage what you already know that and you can make a reasonable assumption so obviously you won't choose a, a multi core processor platform for a, a thermostat uh, those kind of common sense filtering you can do right um industrial typical you know as a as an engineer embedded engineer you should know which platforms are popular which microcontrollers are popular for which applications you know it's, it's a professional uh, you know upkeep that you have to do scanning uh, magazines or whatever to know which are the application you can read the processor application notes you would know i mean the, the semiconductor vendors publish all kind of uh, information about the various applications periodically you have to equip yourself it's okay earlier it was msp430 what is the equivalent of msp430 now popular in the arm family do people use it the st micro platform has an equivalent for that so i think that is part of a professional uh, kit uh, knowing the generic uh, application space for which what platforms are used automotive specific grade components may be different so if you are talking to an automotive company for an interview you should you are expected to know uh, the typical some groundwork you may have to know if you have not already done okay makes sense thank you there is no one shoe fits all kind okay so yeah definitely but i, I strongly yeah. advise not prepare for a target interview you, if you are generally keeping yourself informed reading um, online magazines or otherwise you will be good and you can be saying that this is all i know but i will use this to explore this problem okay, okay. you so as that itself is not important you are not actually building the product you are only doing an interview as long as you are communicating your thinking clarity etc are established and your background how you leverage is established you are good